Hello, in this uh, video I'm going to talk about uh, DNS uh, protocol, DNS application protocol. Okay, DNS is a protocol which is uh, available at the application layer of TCP IP protocol stack. And uh, generally, how do we use DNS? DNS is very important. So assume, for example, you have a small network with PC1, PC2, PC3, so we have three PCs on this network and these computers are connected through LAN okay let me just represent this LAN using a bus topology and we have a server there is a server so it can be any server like web server or any type of uh, server uh, of course with TCP IP we identify computers using their IP address let's say the IP address of the server here is 192.168.0.100 this is the IP address which has been allocated or assigned to the server. So each time uh, any one of these PCs wants to access the server, he simply has to put the following URL uh, in the address box of the browser. Let's say HTTP colon double slash 192.168.0.100. Now this URL basically will allow every PC to access the website which is running on the server, on the web server. Now, most of the time we don't use IP address to uh, refer to a particular server or machine because it's very difficult to remember uh, IP addresses. So IP address is not user friendly. It's something that we need to remember. And if we are accessing many devices on daily basis, so it becomes a headache and problem. So instead we refer to the DNS. We have to get the help of DNS protocol. Uh, I'm going to explain a very basic portion of DNS. So instead of accessing directly the server using its IP address, uh, we need to have another uh, server here on the network, the DNS server. Okay, we need to configure it. Now uh, we can do the following. So instead of referring to uh, the machine using its uh, IP address, we can do the following: use this URL, and uh, we can put w.example.com so what happens here is that each time any one of these PCs wants to refer to this web server by its name fully qualified domain name okay so what it does computer does, does not understand name so they only understand IP address so the first thing they will do uh, computers need to access need to contact a DNS server so they have to contact the DNS server, send a DNS query. So they need to send a DNS query to the DNS server. In the DNS query, they're going to put uh, the fully qualified domain name of the destination or the target. Once the DNS server receives this query, it's going to generate a reply or a response, a DNS response. So it will generate a DNS response. And in the response, you will find the IP address corresponding to the fully qualified domain name which has been queried by the uh, DNS client. Once the PC, for example, a PC1 in our case, receives the IP address from the DNS uh, server, then is going to use this, DN this IP address to establish direct connection with the web server, with the server which is running in our uh, situation here, in our case, as a web server. So uh, I don't have to remember IP address of every machine I access on a daily basis or every day. I just use the name. It's very easy. So I'm going to use the name of uh, any server. However, my computer needs to know the IP address of the DNS server, which is uh, of the local DNS server. And then it will contact the local DNS server by sending DNS query. In the query, you will find the name used uh, of the server uh, that we want to contact and then the DNS server up and receiving this it's going to generate a DNS response to the client and then the client will use the DNS uh, the IP address obtained as part of DNS response to contact directly web server of course if you have the IP address you don't need uh, to contact DNS server because IP address is already there and TCP IP is natively built to use the IP address so you don't need to contact DNS server DNS server is contacted only when you use names to refer to specific computers so now what do we have with the uh, what do we have in uh, with DNS uh, protocol uh, we can say the following let me just uh, change this DNS uh, protocol follows a client server paradigm uh, so we, you have a client server uh, sorry 
it follows a client server paradigm you have in one side dns client okay and in the other side we have a dns server dns server so the dns client is the one who is going to send a dns query okay so the dns client will send a dns query to the dns server and the dns server is the one who is going to reply by sending dns response uh, now typically what do we have in dns query dns query we have names we have names alpha numeric names like uh, for example w.example.com okay this is the name that we have in the query and in the dns response you will find the ip address related to that which is 192.168.0.100 this is what you will find in dns response uh, now uh, if we represent this on the network from the processes point of view so we have a dns uh, client process dns client process which is going to interact with a dns server process like this dns server process okay now each process is running on a separate computer let's say and the communication is based on the following so the client will will send a dns query and the process here is using port let's say it's using specific port number let's say port 50000 okay it will send this query directly to the dns server dns server is a server is a process always listening on port 53 this is the default port used by dns protocol to listen to uh, incoming dns queries once dns server receives this uh, receives the query is going to use the same uh, the same connection uh, let's say the same uh, session in order to send a response so one time you have the query received and then next time you will have uh, the response which will be received from the dns server to the dns uh, client so on the server side 50 part 53 is used by dns server to receive an incoming query on the other side the client uh, uses its port here to receive replies so all replies will be received at port at port 50,000 on the client side. Now we have to note one thing. Communication between DNS client and DNS server is based on a UDP protocol. Let me just describe this in the next uh, slide. So now what we have, we have first, we have uh, DNS uh, clients like this, DNS client. And we have on the other side, DNS uh, server. All right. This is part 53, which is a uh, default port, well-known port used by the DNS server. And the client, let's say, it's using port 50,000. Uh, now, the, connect, the communication between DNS uh, client and DNS server is based on the UDP protocol, because most of the time, the messages exchanged between the client and the server are small messages, are small messages. So you don't need to establish TCP connection for that so only small messages that's why dns clients communicate with the dns server using udp however if it happens that the dns server feels that the answer that it has to send to the dns client is large enough so what it will do it's going to truncate a dns client and ask dns client to establish to establish a tcp connection directly with the dns server tcp connection of course at port 53 that's why dns protocol is protocol which uses port 53 for both udp and tcp okay so tcp uh, generally is used the tcp protocol is used between dns client and dns server when the message to be sent from the dns server to the client is a large message uh, is a large message so in this situation the dns server will ask the client to it will truncate the connection it will ask the client to open a tcp connection now uh, the client is going to uh, initiate establishing tcp connection with the server with the dns server at port 53 tcp and then uh, the dns server is going to send a response to the client using this tcp connection this is very important to understand. Now, it does not mean that UDP is not used. Uh, UDP also supports large messages. Uh, so in some situation where you have 
large message and uh, DNS server is not allowed to truncate a TCP connection or you configure it for not uh, truncating any TCP connection. Uh, in this situation, you can always rely on, uh, you still rely on UDP protocol. Okay, so UDP protocol is used even if the message to be sent from the DNS server to the client is a large message. And this protocol here is uh, DNS. Make sure that your DNS server supports the extended DNS. So in that in that situation, uh, you have really to um, you keep using UDP for large messages to be exchanged. Now, in which other scenario, uh, uh, other protocols are used? You know, on a, in a network, you can have a, let's say a preferred DNS server. Okay, you can have a preferred DNS server. Okay, and as a backup, you can have an alternate DNS server alternate DNS server. Now, what happens in this situation? Uh, the administrator is going to configure the preferred uh, DNS server. Let's call it here the primary DNS server. It will be configured so the DNS table is entered manually here, manually on the preferred DNS server. And then you configure the alternate DNS server. Let's call it here secondary uh, DNS server to, to pull the DNS table from the primary DNS server is going to pull it from here or you configure the DNS server the preferred DNS server to push the DNS table to alternate DNS server so if the alternate DNS server doesn't want to want doesn't want to wait so it's going to pull it or if the preferred DNS server uh, is configured to push it directly to the alternate DNS server either way the complete DNS table is going to be transferred to the alternate DNS server uh, here, the transfer between the two servers is based on the TCP protocol because it's reliable and we want the complete uh, DNS uh, table to be uh, reliably transferred from the primary DNS server to the secondary DNS server. This is uh, extremely important. Uh, so this happens between servers. Now, what happens when we have a DNS client? If I have a DNS client and the DNS client is communicating as we said initially with a DNS uh, with a DNS server so the DNS client communicate with the DNS server using UDP so at port 53 and here assume this is just an example 50,000 what happens if uh, UDP datagram is lost I mean the, U the DNS query is lost because since it's using uh, UDP protocol the query can be lost for or can be uh, caught in congestion or it reaches a buffer which is full so it will be discarded so what happens of course we know that UDP is connectionless UDP is not reliable so in case one DNS query is lost DNS client is going to send another time so you will have multiple attempt uh, to send this DNS query to reach the uh, DNS server so first Make sure that you, you, you configure uh, the DNS client to send multiple items to the DNS server in order to send the DNS query. Now, in case either DNS query will reach the server, now the server will send back the DNS response. So either DNS query is lost or DNS response is lost, it doesn't matter. If the DNS client does not receive the, query, the response within a specific time, so it's going to retransmit again the uh, DNS uh, query. Uh, on Microsoft, the default number of times, multiple attempt is seven, of course. You can always increment this if you want, in case the network is not really uh, reliable, or the network is suffering some congestion or some problems. You can always increment the number of attempts uh, on the client side. So this is a brief description of how DNS protocol works on a local area network. And I, uh, I have uh, restricted my talk to the simple interaction between a DNS uh, client and DNS and the local DNS server. And also I talked about the protocol, the transport layer protocol used between um, the DNS servers on a local area network or a small intranet. Uh, on, a, um, on a LAN or let's say small intranet, it's better to have more than one DNS server because if, if one DNS server is down, the other one is going to work will continue actually the uh, pro providing the service of uh, DNS resolution and uh, nowadays <laughs> the um, let's say on Microsoft platform we call the prefer the primary DNS server is called preferred DNS server 
and the secondary DNS server is called alternate DNS server. I think the, the term primary and secondary are still kept or used on Linux platform, Unix platform. But how does it work on, on Microsoft is that when there is a client, so the client will send <laughs> the first uh, query will go to the client, to the preferred DNS server, okay, when accessing server one, let's say. If the client wants to access another server, server two, let's say, the second query will be directed to the alternate DNS server. So they're going to work in alternate uh, fashion. Uh, so the first query will go to the preferred DNS server. The second uh, query will go to the alternate DNS server. The third query will go to the preferred DNS server. The fourth one will go to the alternate DNS server and so on. That's why when you configure a DNS, uh, DNS IP address on your computer, uh, just make sure that you fill the uh, IP address. Um, you have two fields actually, where you can put the IP address of the preferred DNS server. And now, if you don't have a second DNS server, just leave the second field, you leave it uh, empty. Don't put anything inside, because if you put anything, let's say you fill it with an IP address, which is not configured or or the uh, that DNS server is not working properly, so things will work like this: the first DNS query will go to the first to the uh, preferred DNS server, the second DNS query will go to the alternate DNS server, and since this IP address or this DNS server is not available, not working, or you just put any IP address in this case, so it will not work. So you'll have problem of connectivity. Hope this video is useful. Thank you.